Well, hello there, John Fuller here. I thought I'd do a quick painting today on a video to emphasize to you uh, three points in watercolor. Aerial perspective, counter change, and graduation. They're quite important, and I think that everybody should learn and inwardly digest how simple these things are. The painting on the left hand side it shows a lane with a tree. We've got aerial perspective at the back. These trees are light. They're light grey, they're light blue. This colour is certainly not green. So they drop back into the picture. Then we come forward with a simple thing called counter change. Counter change is dark against light, light against dark, light against dark, light against dark, dark against light. This then gives everything in a watercolour, it should be have this counter change, it gives interest to the painting. See this roof here? I haven't painted that roof in. That roof has purely been defined by the colours around the outside, so it's counter change. And then we come to graduation. Graduation is where you put a wash on and then you add different colours to it and let it mix on the paper. You don't stir it up in your, in your palette until you've got the right colour. Otherwise, it will be a very, very boring painting, believe you me. So you, you put a wet wash on and then you add to it and let the work, let the colours work within the painting. Very simple. I'm going to now extend this little video you're seeing at the moment to show you how we made up this painting. Hope you enjoy it. OK, then. Right, this little little video is it's basically about aerial perspective, counter change and graduation. So we'll quickly go into it. We'll do a, a quick sky as the sky is not really the important part of this little video. A little bit more. Now we're going to add some just plain water just to soften up one or two of the edges and I'm going to add a little bit <coughs> of raw sienna Just to give some of these clouds a little bit of warmth. It's always best when you're doing skies, get in, do what you want, get out and leave, and stay out. I'm going to put some little bit of shadow. And don't panic, it's not that strong. Right. Now we're going to go and <clears throat> put in 
all very very quickly done doesn't matter if you go over over other parts of the painting this field is going to be done in a raw sienna come right the way down across the bank We'll just start to put a little bit of colour into the trees. Right, we'll let that dry and then come back. Okay, this is now dry enough to get moving. So I'm going to put in the distant trees the other side of the field. And this is these are going to be in a slight grey colour. Nothing definite. It's just an indication. Towards the bottom of them, we'll add a bit more colour in a minute. And we're going to go round this barn roof because I want that barn roof to stand out. All we're basically doing is making marks. We're not colouring in. And that's where people do go wrong. You've got to get away from this habit of colouring in between pencil lines. Right, I'll add a little tiny bit of <clears throat> a little bit of darkish brown to warm up the base of these. You'll notice that the bottom of these trees are all ragged. That is to give an indication of the undulations, etc., grass and that, on the bottom against the fields. bottom of the hedge showing all the grasses go to a finer brush and put some darks in
Okay, let's let that dry. Soften up those a little tiny bit. When they are dried, we will then start on the trees. I'm going to put a little bit of blue in on this um, this track just to indicate some puddles. Right, that's that. See, immediately we've got counter change. We've got dark against light, dark against light, dark against light, dark against light, dark against light. Right. Going to start building up some ivy now. Nice dark green. Little bit of dark on the base and on the shadow side of the tree. Don't forget it's all wet into wet, so it's gonna all melt go down. But it gives a little bit 
of the graduation we're looking for. Now with a rigger, Just a few on these trees down here. Don't forget the branches don't always go up. They go sideways, they go down. This is still wet, so I can add a little bit, a bit more variation into it. Right, we don't want to do too much. It becomes over fussy. I'm going to leave that tree now. And I'm going to carry on now with the... with the focal point, which is the building. Just need maybe a little branch in there. That's better. Just to fill in the space. And down here we'll put some little bit of interest to fill in that side in a minute when this is all dry I'm going to put some some winter foliage on this very very quickly Brick barn down here. Not enough water. You can always make the mistake of not putting enough water on. A little bit of variation. Okay, I'm going to let that dry now. 
Okay, that's dried enough now. We're going to put some more, some more work into the grass. As I say, it's not green. Grasses are not always green. So don't go that down that mistake. They have hundreds and hundreds of different colours. And again, don't go in with a dry brush. Just dragging, the, dragging it down across this bank. Quick, easy strokes. A little bit more blue as it gets down to this further distance. And where the, the lane comes up, we'll put on clean water first. And then a mixture of green, brown, just to give some shadow lines at the edge between these puddles. A little bit of darkness to sit that building on. And a bit of shadow to punch it out. All right, I'm going to put a bit of interest now in, in the form of just a couple of posts. They haven't got to be exact, whatever you do. And we have a couple on this side of the road. I'm going to accentuate some grasses on this wet. Right, let's have a little breather. I'm going to put some shadow now, some deep shadow, a little bit darker than that, coming down very raggedy of this tree. It'll go up the bank on that side. And these posts here. Bit of shadow, bit of shadow on that building. I'm not going to bother to put shadow on the distance, it'll make it too confusing. What we will do is we'll just darken up 
the sides of those posts and the underneath the lay board. Okay, let's let that dry. I'm going to put some very, very light foliage with just the remnants of the autumn. And it's done with the side of a brush, a dryish brush. Okay, then just remember that. It's just quick strokes and not too much too many that just indicate a little bit of foliage left on those branches and twigs from the autumn it's very easy to go over the top with this and you end up with a splodge and it is horrible Edward Wesson was the man who could do trees, an absolute genius, just with a few brush strokes he'd have a tree there and it was believable. Right, we're going to just show a few grasses, a bit of interest into this hedge where it's still wet. Hasn't got to be in scale, it just gives something for the viewer's mind to work on. Okay, now the final, just the finishing touches now. Just to give us a little bit of foreground interest, I'm going to put some grasses in very dark colour. Just drag them up here and there. Funnily enough, especially around the bottom of posts and things like that. It needs something. The shadow of that tree is fine. However, it needs something this side of that. To actually push the painting right the way back. So I think we'll put another shadow darker than that. Put a purple with it across here. I think that helps it a little bit. Maybe not. Maybe I've got it wrong. We can all make mistakes. I make a lot of them. Just wants a little bit of interest in the sky here. And we'll put some birds in. Why not? There's a few pigeons flying about. shadow side of this big tree just needs a little bit of something in there I think you've got to realize that you you reach a point with a painting that enough is enough and if you're not careful it's all gonna go very very bad on you so I think we're gonna call that one a day apart from a few highlights that I'm going to put in and I'm going to do this with a reservoir brush and a bit of opaque white 
a lot of people don't like opaque white they swear it's not good that's up to them Want to do too much in fact I don't think I'm gonna do much at all I think we've got enough on there not careful you make it very contrived and that is approaching that mark now there's a saying that a lot of artists use especially though I'll just do this and the painting is ruined. Put some highlight on the top of those. Highlights, lights and darks, they really do bring a painting out. As I say, it hasn't got to be accurate. It's your, if you were doing this painting, in on plan air um, you would forget when you get home a, a lot of the surrounding little bits and pieces that you feel that you should have put in so there we go that's it 